Hi there, my name is Matthew and uh, in this uh, tutorial I'm uh, going to show you how to use uh, uh, Xstretch uh, Create Displacement, Displacement Network Tool. So, um, this is meant to be used in, uh, in situation where you want Xstretch um, tension calculation to deform displacement maps. Uh, well, not to deform them, but to say like, okay, when the geometry stretch, go into, uh, go and take that displacement map. When it's squash, go and take the other one. When it bends, go take this one. So that way you can have very, very detailed deformation happening on uh, your mesh. Uh, and sometimes uh, you, you just cannot uh, do it any other way because it would be too... Uh, too heavy uh, otherwise uh, if you do it uh, inside my so for example if we create a plane here put that to one center it put some subdivision okay so this is our plane uh, freeze the transformation and delete the story now we apply a stretch uh, onto it and once this is done uh, let's say we yes le, 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 let's do it right away let's create the displacement network right now so um, uh, here uh, you have a you have a choice to just uh, create the displacement network just for the tension just for the angles or both of them so it's really up to your needs uh, in this example it's just going to be for the tension and uh, the other option here attach pre-post render mail script this was created because since the the, the, the tension uh, of uh, you, you know it, w when you go into F stretch and you go to draw color per vertex you put it on and when you move the geometry around you know the, the the tension here that you see happening it has to be connected to a shading network that drives the displacement map but because every renderer has its own way of working uh, this needs to, uh, to the, 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 the way it's doing it right now is that uh, a mail script uh, creates uh, exports this map and connects it in the shading network for a uh, every frame that uh, is being rendered uh, but there's two ways to do it you, if you attach the pre-post pre uh, render mail script this mail script will do it for each frame for you and uh, if you go into uh, the render settings uh, at the end here render option this uh, pre-render and post-render mail script this is where it's going to be created so it's very important after that to to, to be to, to, to be aware that it's there and if you remove the setup you have to remove the scripts too and if you have multiple geometry uh, you have to handle that uh, in the pipeline in the workflow you have to to take care of that correctly so it doesn't uh, become a big mess you know but uh, since I know that everyone has its own way of working, I also made another tool which is uh, here, Bake Color Per Vertex. So this tool allow you to, uh, allows you to, uh, to, to select a geometry and uh, to, to go through each frame of the animation and, and export the tension here that we see into a map. Uh, a, series, uh, a series of uh, image uh, that will be uh, baked and uh, saved on your computer and then you can uh, connect that uh <coughs> th those maps into the shading network that has been that will be created with this tool here so there's those two way of uh, doing it but uh, I prefer the attach pre post render mail script. This is why it was uh, left here by default. So let's do it the, this way for now. And uh, here, the app and existing pre post render mail script uh, uh, checkbox. 
this means that if there was already something in here it's just gonna take it and put it at the end so nothing is lost and it's the default setting and uh, if you uncheck it it's just gonna replace it so that's it okay and once this is done um, let's just put the geometry back to zero like that here and um, tension base this is perfect happen to existing you can leave it like that the mesh so you pick the mesh and you see everything uh, not everything but mm, a lot of fields get filled up uh, just when you pick the mesh because it already knows like wh what the rest is so usually you don't have to to pick them by hand because it's already done uh, the stretch node is just the stretch node here that uh, is on the mesh and the shading group uh, the shading group is if you go to the hyper shade here and you the, the, the material we use for for this geometry it's uh, Lambert and if you graph it here you see this is the shading group if you create a uh, new material here, this is the shading group of the material. So every material has its shading group and this is where the displacement is being connected. Right here in the shading group, displacement material. So it's very important to pick the good one. But when you pick the mesh, it picks the, the, the shading group of the material that is already connected to the mesh. So usually that, uh, that does it, the, the job. So uh, right after that, what you have to do is you you take the the displacement map uh, that you want. So you you have one for your neutral pose. You have one when it's stretch, and you have one when it's squashes. So I made the little displacement that I'm going to show you right now. So this will be the the one when it's stretch, and this will be the one when it's wash and the neutral one will be this so we browse for the neutral let's go in here and neutral here browse the stretch squash and that's it and uh, here it's the setting of the map that's going to be exported and used for the tension so usually you just leave the default setting and it's pretty good and here there's little options because since those files are going to be written to the, your hard disk uh, you, you, usually you want them to be deleted right after the render unless you want to keep them for I don't know what reason especially that they're very fast to make so most of the time you don't want to get them uh, to, to keep them and this is the temporary folder by default uh, you can change that uh, if you want so let's just take here another folder this is where they're gonna be written and then you say create displacement network and you get this one in here this warning you can just do not show it it it, it says that basically uh, the ramp for the well the tension in our case but if you if we, if we would have uh, taken the angle it would be the, the angle ramp also it has to be um, uh, transformed into a grid scale because when it uh, when 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 we drive the spacement map we need grid scale ramp that's the way it is so uh, and uh, don't also the, the warning said that the, you should not uh, change this afterward and also don't play with the contrast setting here so that's it and uh, if you go to the hypershade you select Lambert 1 you graph it and you take its shading group you graph that and you you see oh oh here displacement 
Okay, we're going to attribute editor. We see displacement material here. There's something now. Uh, so we uh, the, the the script created the displacement node and here a little asset. If you expand the asset, you see that uh, the 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 shading network is here. So in the shading network, you see we have our squash map, we have our stretch map, we have our neutral map, and uh, we have the tension here. The, there's nothing in it because this is going to be created when the render are going to be launched and uh, the other uh, nodes are used to connect uh, all of this together and to make the the, the maps being uh, to, to, to make the the, the the map switch one to the other uh, correctly also uh, sometimes you might want to to change a bit of a contrast of, uh, of, of the transition of the map so there's two contrast nodes here that you can change for one for the stretch, one for the squash. Um, but usually you don't have to play with that. So let's just put it back like that. And uh, <coughs> uh, also uh, we are using Montalray for this example. So let's go to rendering Montal Array approximation editor this is used for um, uh, for Montal Array to deal correctly with the displacement map because Maya is not uh, the best at that so create here subdivision edit uh, let's put it to 3 that's good then Let's put Montal Ray as a render as a renderer. And uh, if we hit render, you'll see that nothing happens. This is because uh, I didn't move the mesh. So if you move the mesh, you stretch it like that, and you render it. Oh, the displacement happened, and uh, if you squash it here like that, and you see we don't see a lot of uh, of squash happening. So let's just go to the setting and put the range of the squash like that. Oh, there's squash happening. So that's pretty much it. Uh, it, it, it's just that simple. You have to browse your map, and usually you just pick the mesh, leave the default settings, and that's it. And uh, you can also do the same thing for the angle or both of the uh, angle and tension base also. And uh, if in your pipeline you prefer to do it uh, with the other tool. And um, what you can do is just that you you take this one here, you go to tool, bake color per vertex, and this you see it's pretty much the same setting as here. And this also uh, when you you hit bake color per vertex, it launch a mail command with all the flags in the window. So if you go into uh, echo all commands here, and you, we will see it. You will see it when we're gonna launch it. So this command can be used in the pipeline. And um, uh, so for the map size, uh, that's good. JPEG, that's good. Start frame and frame. You see, it picks automatically the way. The, the, the good uh, framing, the name of the file and the directory. So let's put the directory to here. Then. And first refresh is that sometimes, uh, if for I don't know what reason, the the refresh doesn't uh, that doesn't occur correctly, and you're having some issue. You can just check that and. Um, the, the script will uh, will force the mesh to be refreshed 
that's it. So if you bake that, you see, there we go. It goes through every frame, every frame and bake it. So it gets that. Well, we didn't animate it, so it's everywhere. And uh, uh, yes, uh, the the command the command that has been launched is uh, well. Let's just launch it again because I didn't see by Carver Vertex. Where are you, command? Well, I think there's a lot of stuff that are being displayed because of the equal command. I and I think it displays it even without it. Does it? Oh no, it doesn't. Anyway, um, there's a comment uh, that does it. Uh, I might as well uh, just put it on the website if anyone uh, needs it. It's very simple. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much it for the displacement. And uh, this is... Uh, 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 also, don't forget to... to um, if, you, if you create a setup and you have your squash mesh, stretch mesh, bend in mesh, bend out mesh um, inside Maya. You, when you generate displacement maps in like ZBrush or Mudbox or 3D Code or whatever, you have to use, for example, when you're gonna create your displacement for the neutral mesh, you're gonna have to use your neutral mesh that is inside Maya and create the displacement based on that. When you're going to create the displacement for the stretch, you're going to use not your neutral mesh inside Maya, but your stretch mesh inside Maya. And create the displacement based on that. And it's very important to do it that way. And this is the same for the, the squash, the bend in and the bed out uh, mesh too. So that's pretty much uh, how you you do it, and then you just put out put in uh, your your map here, and that's it. So I hope this was clear enough. And uh, if you have any question, don't hesitate to email me. And uh, thank you for watching.